very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Rabbit Trails. Uh, for those of you that are watching us for the first time, this is our first live stream, and we are very, very excited to be here with you on this beautiful Sunday. Um, we're excited because it's not only my partner Max and I, but we have two wonderful guests with us today. So we have lots of information to share with you, and we're glad you have decided to join us. Now, understand, this is like getting a new car and learning to drive it. We are learning that a uh, couple of things that have to be done here. You're watching us, but we understand if we, if we try to watch ourselves, there's a little delay in between our voices when we're trying to watch to simultaneously. So we have our phones here. If you want to type in questions uh, after we get through the major portion of this, uh, of this show today, we'll, we'll entertain some questions. So it gives you a chance to inter uh, interact with us as well. Uh, if, those, if this is the first time you watched uh, Rabbit Trails, let me just say that uh, the purpose of this program is to talk about and address issues in our industry. And usually we take on a lot of misinformation and try to give you clarification. You know, our goal as a company, Guru Nation, was always to give you brand neutral information that you could use in a, as a salon professional and allow you to address any kind of problems and challenges that you have. And sometimes when we get to talking about our information, we start heading down rabbit trails. And that's why this program is called Rabbit Trail. But most importantly today, we have a little bit of fun. We talk about our flubs. We talk about our fibs. We talk about some of the falsehoods. We talk about some of the fantasies in our industry. So it's kind of a fun show. Um, we are not here to be condescending or we're not trying to contradict your belief system, although we probably will in some things. Most importantly, our, hopefully, is to point you in the way of clarity. So with that being said, we're going to start our program today. <clears throat> I would, first of all, like to introduce you to a couple of our guests, and uh, I'm going to take them one at a time. So we're going to start with the uh, young lady here that uh, has uh, no, she's not in the forest with us. She's coming to us from the, the wonderful city of Chicago, Illinois. Her name is Yvette Fontenay, and Yvette, welcome to the program. We are glad you are here. Oh, let me take myself off of mute here. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. I know it's quite early for some of you, but uh, thank you for being here. My name is Yvette Fontani, and I'm from Chicago, like uh, Dennis said, and it's uh, actually really beautiful out today. So hopefully where you're from, too, it's nice and beautiful, too. You have some beautiful weather. Yes, we hope so. So look, Yvette, I know that you are a trainer uh, for TG, and I know you've worked for this company for a long time, correct? Yes, So correct. I'd like to start today by just kind of asking you, as an educator and as a salon owner, a person who actually works behind the chair, mm -hmm. what are some of the things that you uh, have seen, uh, the, some of the accomplishments you've seen or the things you're really excited about that's happened to our industry in the last few years, as far as understanding of hair color. And then where do you think we still have some challenges as far as understanding and mastering that part of our craft? I think, um, I mean, that's a great question, but I think during the pandemic, I think, or the past couple of years, I think a lot of people are just tired of seeing the, you know, how many freehand coloring can you do or, or balayaging or whatever root melts or whatever I think a lot of people are trying to, are starting to move away from that and getting more into the science of hair and color theory and really understanding it and during the you know lockdown or everybody staying at home I feel that a lot of people were looking into those type of classes instead of okay how can I do another highlight or how can I do another color melt I think a lot of people are starting especially you know, knowing you and knowing Max and also knowing Erica, a lot of people are starting to know you guys. And I think that's what they want to really start learning more and more. They're curious, you know, why is this color turning sideways, you know? And yes, we can take a tube of color and put it on somebody's head, but what is that really doing? You're just, it's a guessing game, but knowing the theory behind it and the science behind it, you'll have more successful hair coloring. So I think that's one of the things that you know, right. is really exciting that everybody's looking for more of the science instead of the BS, you know, and hair coloring. Yeah, I think they are. I think really people are really concerned 
about understanding the why and, and they're, they're really seeking that out because, instead of the how you know oh, yes. everybody wants to know the why is the how's you, you know it's like okay how do i do this give me a formula you know i mean really so we have to start thinking you know getting out of that mentality that you want we're enabling people if we're just giving them the formula or just here just do it this way you know instead of telling right. them the why right yeah, I, I truly believe that. And I, I, I think it's a, there's so much information out there and you don't know really what to believe, especially if you're trying to develop your skills and develop your knowledge. And so uh, it's like I, I saw a friend post, he said one question about hair color and you get like 27 different answers. <laughs> and it's like, it can't possibly be 27 different answers or different options, but it's because... Yeah, I think most of the time or a lot of the time we misunderstand marketing stories for science. And um, we, I'm, I'm proud to see that there's a group of people that are actually searching now because they want truly to master this business. So that's great. And Absolutely. I'm sure you deal with that all the time and you're bilingual. Because, so you deal with not only English speaking people, but also Spanish speaking people, correct? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I think in the Spanish work community, I find a lot of times there's more opinion than there is sometimes science because they don't get access to the English where a lot of research is done and things like that. So sometimes it's a struggle for them to understand, you know, how peroxide works, how hair color works, how they work in combination, things of that sort. And um, so I think it's really great. It's a huge market in our industry, and it's a part of the world that a lot of manufacturers don't even focus against, do they? Absolutely, absolutely. And I think that, um, like you said, you know, there, there's a huge Latino community, you know, everywhere. And they're so curious, too, to learn. You know, like we have Ricardo, and, you know, we have yes. a couple of the people. And, you know, he's so, like, into just knowing the science of hair. So I feel like once you turn somebody onto something, it's like, you know, give me more, give me more, you know, and the science behind, like the same thing when I met you, Dennis, um, yes. you know, I wanted to know more. I wanted to know the why, and I want to continue to know the whys, you know, and every day is a learning lesson for me. And, you know, I go out and research it or else I test it myself. I'm not just going to read it on Facebook or on Instagram. Oh, do it this way and not try it or ask a question. Well, how can I get to this, you know, from this to this without trying it, you know, I mean, how are we going to learn? But um, yeah, truly. I think the, the Latin community, everybody is just wanting to know how to, uh, they want to learn the whys now, right. which is so, it's great. I, I think it. that's great. I think that's great. Uh, my Spanish is really poor. I learned Spanish in Los Angeles, in El Monte, California. So I speak broken Spanish. And <laughs> I found that sometimes the words you use, they don't translate properly because right. we have a lot of colloquialisms in English, you know, and that doesn't translate into another language necessarily. And even using Google Translate doesn't work. I discovered yeah. that myself because I went, <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. There's actually a translation. I can just speak it and they'll <laughs> understand it. And then they say, but wait, that's a different dialect. So I don't get it. What are you saying? So that's a, there's a whole huge community out there that I think we can really explore to help them and to help us learn how to deliver our message in many different ways. I think that's that's important. Absolutely. All communities. Wonderful. You know, great. Well, I'm really great, glad you're here today. And so uh, as we progress today through the program, I'm sure you have <laughs> a lot of information you'll be sharing with everybody. Hey, Erica, how are you, girl? Hey guys, I'm great. Thank you. How are you? I'm I'm great, hon. Listen, everyone, this is Erica Blancet, and she is an amazing woman. Uh, uh, Eric and I have known each other now for I think what three years? Has it been three years yeah. or four years? Right around there. Something like that. Um, we did uh, our first educational event. We did was a symposium in Orange County, California, and um, Erica is so it's so she is so in tune to what's happening is it like sometimes she can complete my sentences it's just so funny when i listen to her i just go oh my god <laughs> that's amazing 
<clears throat> and and the thing I love about her is that she is a consummate professional. She is focused on, uh, as everyone has, when we've talked and we've presented our message and our information, I've always said, never believe what we say, always test it. And she is one of those individuals who tests, who does the testing. In mm -hmm. fact, she has contributed a lot to helping us, helping me understand how to communicate a little bit better because we've had several subjects where I said, Erica, how else can I do this? She said, well, let's do this test and see what happens. And it was amazing because it helped mm -hmm. us to answer that question about direct dyes and hot water and cold water and get that, hopefully that whole story taken care of. Mm -hmm. I'm so actually in the middle of washing those exact, um, or shampooing them multiple times. I have a little whiteboard on my cabinet and I'm like, Slashing every time I shampoo them with hot water and slashing every time I shampoo with cold water. So <laughs> that's they're great. Swatches. Great. So, Erica, I'm going to ask you the same question that I ask you that. Uh, you know, you've seen this industry to go through a lot of changes in the last three or four years, or as long as you've been in the industry. I think you're what, 16, 18 years or something like that? 18 years in, yeah. 18 years in. Uh, what do you think of really the, the things that we've accomplished that have been really great for the business? And where do you think there's still some struggles? You know, I, I'm with you, Ben, on this one. People are more interested in the science uh, than they used to be. Uh, if you would have told me 10 years ago that, you know, this is what's going on in the hair when we put color on it, I probably wouldn't have cared. I probably would have said, <laughs> if it works, it works, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but... You know, now I think because it separates us as professionals to, you know, bathroom barbers or bathroom colorists, um, I think that's what gives us that empowerment to, to say, you know, I am the professional. I know what's happening and this right. is why I'm going to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, I think uh, that's great. You know, one of the things that I love is for people who are, are watching this, who know me, who've known me for a longer period of time, things I've been saying, the message that we've been delivering for 35, almost 40 years, you now see a lot of people on social media that are actually delivering that message. And they're adding visuals that, that actually validate everything mm -hmm. that we've been teaching, which is, is so gratifying. And it really is, touches my heart because my mentor, who turned the lights on for me, you know, he said to me at the, when he, before he passed away, he said, I want you to promise me you'll do your best every day to make this industry a better place than it was when you got here. And I've strived to do that. And it's so wonderful. I think he would be excited to see that that message is actually getting out into the industry today. And so that, that makes it very exciting and wonderful. And so, I think social media had a big, had a big oh, part of that. It's changed everything, okay. hasn't it? You know, yeah, I don't think the information would have gotten out there had it not been for social media and lives and Instagram right. and YouTube and all that stuff. It's, you know, it, it was much harder to get that information out, I think, beforehand. You're, you're absolutely right, Erica. Social media has changed the world in so many ways, so many great ways, and then some negative ways, yeah. too. Absolutely. But it's really changed the world and it's allowed us to connect hairdresser to hairdresser around the world. I mean, it's funny, like last Monday I was doing a class and I had uh, I had a student that was uh, with us from South Africa, one that was with us from Scotland, um, one from Sweden. <laughs> and it's just like I just it's amazing that we touch people that far and that wide. And it just really, I think it's brought the hairdresser community close together. And, uh, and it has allowed us to get that message out. So, and my friend, my partner, Max, how you doing, brother? I'm all right. How are you, Dennis? Well, because of you yesterday, I took four hours of my life <laughs> and watched and listen, if you people don't have HBO Max, you have to get it. And you have to watch the Justice League. <laughs> I didn't realize it was a four-hour movie. Max did call me and tell me. I got into only the first two parts. And I thought, well, I'll watch these and I'll quit. And then I couldn't quit because it was like, I want to know what happens next. I want to know what happens next. 
So, um, but that was good. But uh, you're mostly, welcome. Yes. Uh, yeah. you, <laughs> 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 Thank you. And so Max is uh, coming to us today from Boston, Massachusetts. I forgot to say Erica's here in California. She's actually not far from me. She's, what are you, 10 miles from 20 me? minutes away, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but Max will not be coming to us from Boston very soon. He's going to be coming to us from St. Louis, Missouri. Mm -hmm. And that's how you say the name, Missouri. That's right. <laughs> He's going to be living on the lake house in the, in the lake house on the lake, and so uh, so we will uh, have him coming to us from the Midwest, from the home of um, what's it called? What's the little burger? Uh, Castle White Castle. Oh, White um, Castle. <laughs> that's the home of White Castle Burgers. You know that, right? <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, they were created there. <laughs> so it's like burger on a biscuit. So anyway, brother, how are you today? Very good. And, um, you know, I just, I think like the, our colleagues here have just summed it all up. There's definitely been in the last few years, a huge resurgence on the, um, the science and chemistry side, which even, you know, like, like we've all been talking, like for me, even I didn't really care about it all that much, let's say 10 years ago, mm -hmm. but you know, uh, over time, I really started to kind of break away from what marketing said and what was really happening and right. really trying to, uh, you know, figure out what was going on for my own sort of edification. I, yeah. I also think that, you know, this, the last 10 years or so, and even during COVID, the independent education movement has a really taken it's off. Exploded, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. And, and we've, as independent educators, especially with the pandemic, we've kind of had to really figure out how to deliver virtual education. Right. For some of us, this was really the first time that we were doing online, you know, like seminars, right? you know, other than like theory classes, like where you're even doing hands-on and stuff. And, you know, it, it's, it's been a huge... I, I know everyone's been using the word pivot, but it really has been for, I think, all of us, really, wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely. It has been um, it, for many of us who, who hate to be on camera. Now we have to be on camera and we have to learn to interact with people through a screen. Right. And, and sometimes that's not easy to do. Uh, but you have to think about different ways to get your message across to, to help them understand. I mean, um, the great thing about it is like you've, we've learned a lot, right? We've learned we could do a hands-on class virtual, you know? I mean, and the show was kind of born out of the pandemic, really. It was, like, yes. We started just <laughs> like, it started with a thread of text messages where, you know, like we'd see something posted online and be like, you know, oh. I'd send it to Dennis. I'd be like, what is this? Explain oh, it to me. he gets flooded with those because I do yeah. that too, yeah. Max. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's how our mind works, right? right? Like, we're like, we're going to our mentor because it's like something that is like kind of making smoke come out of our ears. <laughs> and then and then the banter goes back and forth. And then, you know, here we are live right. streaming on Facebook. Yeah. Right. You know. Well, you know, it's like... It, 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 some of these questions and, and some of the statements, again, you know, I think we discussed this before. It's like, I think sometimes as a trainer and, and uh, as an educator is that we don't articulate our, our message clearly. And so sometimes it creates confusion. And, and I think that's where most of that occurs. And then there's also the, it's very difficult to be non-branded. Would you agree? I mean, it, it really yeah, is absolutely. difficult to teach non-branded because inevitably what you see happening is you see branded information sneak its way in because so many of us were raised on branded information. Right. And, and, and some of those belief systems still, still, still exist. 
And I see this happen all the time. Like the other day, because now Clubhouse is a thing, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I was in a room in Clubhouse that was promoted as non-branded, <laughs> brand neutral. And I thought, well, this is cool. Uh, although it was being ran by a company educator and their company chemist. But they said they were non-branded. And, you know, I worked with chemists when I worked at Redken, and um, they were very non-branded. The chemists had no, they had no, they had no pony in the race at all. Right. They, they told me, and, and I'm so blessed to have worked with those people because they told me the bitter truth. Sometimes it was bitter truth. So I'm in the room and I'm thinking, okay, this is great. I want to hear what these people are saying. And then they start talking. And then eventually you see a little product come in here and a little product come in there. And before you know it, it's the marketing story. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, okay, I can't stay here because, you know, being non-branded is difficult. It was difficult for me, you know, for 35 years, I always held a brand in my hand. Then when my friend said, why don't you open an educational company and don't talk about brands? I said, I don't, I'm not sure I can do that. But um, it has worked out. It's been a work in progress. But being non-branded is, is something that when people promote that, I expect them to talk about products the way that they should be talking about products. You know, and sometimes it's not the glamorous story. Right. And uh, so it's, it's, that's a challenge I've seen happen. And those are the things we kind of have to laugh at, you know, because we say stuff that's crazy sometimes, you know, because we don't want to deal with it. We just say it's crazy. And the, it's like peroxide opens a cuticle. <laughs> I just kind of go, where in the name of God did you get that idea? <laughs> Who says that? But I heard a chemist. <laughs> not even comment on that the other day when someone said that. And um, that's why I think people struggle. And then we have people who say, well, I don't care what you say, what I'm doing works for me. And that's great. Right. I just, you know, at that point, I just wonder where your bar is set. You know, is that a Dennis, high bar? I just want to um, say hi to everybody that's watching you guys. We have Please. Doris on, uh, Kevin, Jennifer's on, Komen. Uh, and Marcos is left a uh, comment. So I don't see, I can't see anybody. Great. See, like the actual people watching, but everybody who has left a comment, I wanted to say hi to you guys. Together. Great. Hi, that. everybody. I'm sorry. I typed in a hello, everyone. Um, we're glad that you're here. Um, so, um, so anyway, that's what I see happening. And then that's the things that Max and I deal with a lot. You know, we kind of laugh at the things we say and that we do. I mean, um, I probably am going to be doing a, a, a post. I haven't done it yet because I got this picture <laughs> the other day. I wonder who sent you that. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> it was it was showing a before shot of of the hair, which was at level seven, level eight, orange, orange hair. And then they toned it with a level 10 toner. And they neutralized it. It was almost platinum. Magical. It was magical. And so I thought, wow. I, at first I thought, I'm not going to say anything. But then I had to say something because that's not possible. Mm -hmm. that's, that's just simply not possible. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> so those are the things that we deal with. Crazy stuff in this business. So you have to be diligent. <laughs> you have to do your own research mm -hmm. and all of that. And those are the things like, I'm sure Max, what are some of the other crazy stuff that we hear people say? I mean, golly. Oh, oh, a higher volume of developer. will give you <laughs> How do more I make deposit. a, <laughs> right. How to make a, a honey blonde out of a tube of two N. Yes. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I really want my color to match my dachshunds. Um, that was <laughs> that was actually this week. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's that you know you really need to do your due diligence and and make sure that you that that what they're saying is actually a fact. Very very important. 
Well, it's the same thing about converting a permanent color into a demi-permanent color. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, that's still a big deal. There's still people who believe that they can do that. Now, fortunately, some of the people, because our message is getting out, have acquiesced and said, well, you really can't do that. So that's good that they're doing that. But, uh, you know, it's, and the whole thing about demi-permanent versus permanent hair color, you know, for some reason, I think it was, again, because of the marketing story, people believe that a demi-permanent is really different than a permanent color. Mm-hmm. I did for a long time. Yeah. So did I. And yeah, totally. they're only they're both permanent colors. <laughs> it's just one has a different type of alchemine in it. And one really doesn't give you much transfer or much tonal shift at all. And that's what a demi permanent is supposed to do. It's not supposed to give you any tonal shift, but they really still do minor, do. but you can't see it visually. And um, now they have people that are mixing, instead of mixing a five volume developer, which was originally created to work or a one and a half percent developer with a demi color, we're in Europe. If you're in Europe, I see some of our friends from overseas is on, are on those. Uh, a uh, one and a half percent developer. Mm -hmm. um, they say you get no lift. That's not actually true because here's the thing. You're not, you're not going to recognize it visually because you can't see that difference. But even 1.5% developer has to do the same thing as 6% developer. Mm -hmm. It has to break down some of the structure of the hair so that it can deliver and oxidize some of those intermediate dyes in the cuticle layers. So you're still going to get maybe a very minimal amount of tonal shift but you won't even notice it. So some people are now saying, well, now I want to mix it with 10 volume, okay, or 3% developer, and I'll get more deposit. By increasing the developer, you actually don't get more deposit, you actually get less deposit. <laughs> so <clears throat> those are things I think people need to understand. You know, it's you very- You know what I've been hearing lately, Dennis, which um, I addressed on a live, <clears throat> night I've been hearing a lot of so when you apply the color the first 20 minutes does this and the second 20 <laughs> minutes does that yeah. like the peroxide and the color have this magical brain that says okay switch yeah, now right. we can start depositing color now we can you know let's break down let's break down melanin right here and yeah no you didn't know that <laughs> yeah there's little people <laughs> in there right Max mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's like totally sentient it goes oh time to deposit <laughs> Stop see I, I used to that's what I was taught I was totally taught that yeah you know, the first 20 minutes does this and then the, you know and then it's like what do you mean you know when when uh, Dennis started you know when I started learning from Dennis I'm like what does he mean by that and it's like got the why and then mm -hmm. now I understand it yeah. obviously you know what I mean but you know and um you know, there's a, there's a lot of things, Dennis, like you were, you were talking about. One of the things that I saw online was somebody said, if you use lightener on the client's hair, just rinse it and then you can put the toner on top and it's going to last longer and look better. <laughs> so, you know, I was, you know, and, and when you go back and you, yeah. I mean, not, you know, these are things, okay, I never answer anybody like I know it all or whatever, right. because I'm still learning till this day, you know, whatever's happening in this world, I'm still learning everything about color. So, you know, I try to respond and tell her the whys and why shouldn't she do that? And, you know, everything else, but it was kind of like, mm, didn't want to hear it. Now, an educator Here, told her that's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. And that's the way she's going to continue to do it. And her results are great. I said, okay, works for you. Keep doing it. Yeah. Well, you, there's no, you have no answer for that. When they say it works right. for me, you know, I, I, I love it when people do the drop, uh, which was originally created many, many years ago. Um, the drop, if you don't know what that is, it's like you're using like a level one and mm -hmm. you dilute it with clear and you mix it with a developing lotion 
and you use it on the hair and you process for like a minute or two minutes. And they, they think they're toning the hair. And I truly honestly believe that they think that that actually is toning the hair. But in two to three minutes, yes, there is some dye partially developed, but there's not enough dye in there to really do anything. But people believe it. It's sort of like the emperor's magic clothes. You know, they just go, yeah, I can see it. I can see it. And I just go, man, you have a great imagination. <laughs> That's like clear. That's you know, like using clear with a, with a developer to create shine. Yes, absolutely. I, I was crazy. Yeah. Or steal a cuticle. Yeah. Yeah, Max has a great, uh, he has a great little piece of information on the processing cycle. And uh, so Max, why don't you share that with them? Because you, know, you did that on one of our shows. And I think it's really great for them to remember about you know, keep in mind what a processing cycle is. Right. So, so basically in a nutshell, when you mix the, whatever it is, the color with the developer, all of these uh, sort of moving parts and pieces in each one, they all start to party together now. So, so it's like, as soon as, as soon as it's in the bowl and it's the two, the color and the developer are mixed together, mm -hmm. the magic's happening. So when you start to apply it to the hair, you know, it's starting to lighten the hair, but also too, you know, when we look at the, the bowl on our trolley, it's also starting to develop, you know, yeah. as in change color. So the dyes are developing in the bowl. So yes, over the course of time, the, the color that's sitting in your bowl or on the hair continues to get deeper and deeper, but it's all happening basically at the same time. What you're visibly seeing in the beginning, you're seeing more lift because the, the dye intermediates start out colorless. So as mm. they start to develop over time, then you begin to see color, but it's not just like one turns on and one turns off, you know, it's happening the, the whole amount of time. And I've been in classes where it's like been 20 minutes into the development time. And, you know, someone will go, she looks good. Let's take her down. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. What do you know? <laughs> you know, because there's also like the, the, the big thing too, that, to, that I think people don't keep in mind is the longevity mm -hmm. of your end result. Right. right. We, we want to use maximum development time especially when we're like depositing or changing tone because we want that result to last. Right. Yeah. So if all these, these molecules are coming together and you rinse it off before it's fully developed, I mean, what do you think is going to happen? You're not going to have full a fully developed color. Right. color and right. you know, it's just like, it's not going to be what your end result is that, that, day might it might not be that and like even five shampoos right. it's kind of like when people you know when we really got into balayaging you know the the universal root shadow formula was uh, a certain demi permanent liquid color we all know and love you know and level three, six right was it level the level six, six? Yeah. level six <laughs> n which <laughs> is actually basically an ash in that that line right and you'd put it on any kind of like you know, root, root glow you got because the lightener usually came up kind of orangey. Yeah. And, but you were, you were only processing it for like five minutes. And I was like, why, you know, don't you right. want the, there's also the, the benefit of what conditioners are also put in the color. So processing time, I know I kind of went off on my own little rabbit trail. You here, did. You had your own <laughs> rabbit trail trip there. I was going to say, <laughs> how do we jump in there with them? But, uh, yeah. <laughs> but no, you're, you're absolutely right. I think understanding maximum dye development is important. I, I think a lot of people misinterpret that for, uh, they call it progressive color. You know, it's like the color actually, they leave it on longer than they would normally. And the color goes darker. That's what, that's the word. It went darker. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So go. Jimmy uh, put up a comment on the on the page right now on the live, and it says you don't see the shift of color that day, but when you return or when your client returns, uh, you can see it. And yes. the colorist says that color 
pulls, pulls warm. warm. Yes. Jimmy, you're absolutely right. I'll tell you mm -hmm. that uh, that's exactly what happens because we blame the product. We do that a lot in the salon. You know, it's like if it doesn't come out right, you go, are you on medication? Well, no, I take aspirin. Well, maybe you should be on medication. <laughs> Something's right. wrong. It's not me. I didn't do it. Uh, you know, I found this doing uh, hands-on classes when we were doing lightning, the foiling and balayage, because for whatever reason, there's certain people out there who are teaching that when you refresh a balayage, when the client comes back for a retouch, that you drag some of the bleach through over the old section that you had lightened previously because it brightens it up, it refreshes it. Well, no, no, it doesn't refresh it. <laughs> it actually breaks <laughs> down more of the chemical bonds that were holding it together. And what happens is that overlap weakens the structure of the hair. So you can imagine people that overlap like that because they, it was a technique that they were taught. And then the client goes home and the client doesn't realize that the hairdresser took them to the precipice of, of death. And the client just, you know, starts pulling a brush through their hair and they snap their hair. Silence, not, sorry. Not, <laughs> not at the scalp, but they snap their hair like six inches out. Mm -hmm. And so they come back and the client and the hairdresser goes, well, I didn't break your hair. Well, yes, you, you didn't break the hair technically, but you set the hair up to break. I mean, you know. Jimmy says first, the stylist it, may be on medication. <laughs> yeah. Is, right. it, is it first no, degree it was, murder or is it manslaughter? What is it? It was her ponytail holder. That's that's <laughs> the was. one I hear. Yeah. Your ponytail holder is too tight. So I think that, you know, as, as you said, it it's people need to understand where in hair color, where mm -hmm. maximum development is because there are no progressive dyes that are used today. So we misinterpret maximum development for progressive dyes many times. They need to understand that. They also need to understand if you're working with a lightning product, you know, you just simply don't overlap because you lose too many of the chemical bonds and they, don't make, they only make up one third of the hair anyway. So if I overlap all the time, and sometimes I see that on social media, I watch those experts on Instagram and I look at their application and I'm just going, Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, that hair is, and you can see it when they rinse it out. I watched one the other day, very well known. And the application, it was a half an inch of regrowth, but the application was an inch. So it went over that a half an inch. So then when the hair was wet before they toned it, you could see the hair at the scalp was not pale yellow. It was white. It was transparent. Mm -hmm. And so that hair was on the very, 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 very edge. And it's crazy. You know, it's learning to understand the chemicals that we work with can destroy hair. Doesn't matter who, even if it's an organic color, <laughs> it can destroy hair. You can break hair with it. And uh, if we learn to respect what the products we work with and to understand a little bit about them, you know, I think that'll make a huge difference. What do you guys think? Absolutely. I think that, you know, with a lot of the influencers on Instagram where they take the, you know, the guest over to the shampoo bowl, they throw the toner on, they, emulsify it and then they rinse it I think that's everybody's like freaking out that they have to do the same thing and they're going to have this longevity not knowing that you know sometimes a lot of these you know influencers are either working you know <clears throat> they're working quickly to get that result but by the time they shampoo that hair pull that flat iron through the hair or blow dry and pull that flat iron through their hair that you know toner is by the time they leave the door is like 50% is right off their hair. And then when oh, they yeah. go home and they're using, you know, their water or whatever else they're using in their hair, it's, they can come back and their, their, you know, the color's gone, you know? So I just think that going back again and just learning the right way, if you're so scared that you see the color oxidizing on somebody's hair and you want to rinse it, I mean, I see it all the time. They want to rinse it immediately because they're so scared. They're like, oh my God, it's going to pick up the tone too much or whatever. Right. I mean, there's way of fixing it. If not, 
add a little bit of clear, you know, to your, to your sure. tone or leave it on a little bit longer, you know, just, I mean, there's different ways of going through the process and doing it right where right. the guest is going to leave happy and come back and her hair is like, Ooh, what the hell just happened? You know what I mean? Like I didn't do that. Was, you know, was right. I doing, you know, drinking in the back room or, or what, you know what I mean? What formula is this? So it's just, um, just knowing the why's. Right. Going back it, to all it, of that all over again. That's what mastering this business is, you know, and you, and you learn all the time, but that's what mastering it is. I mean, mastering clear in your brand of color. If you can master how to mix clear with your colors, you can increase your color portfolio, your color palette by three and four times. I mean, I, I think about just the other day, Erica posted on her Instagram, she took a level three. And she showed a level three straight, then diluted it with clear, then did more clear than the three, then did it again, I think, a fourth time. And you could see the color, the same dyes, but she had the same dyes at different levels. And so she could actually move that color from a level three up to a level six if she needed it and control the warmth at a level six better than a level six in that same family of colors because the dyes in a level three are much stronger than they are in a level six in everybody's color that's that way. So if you can master how to use clear, uh, that, that, that is amazing. You know, it well, extends you your in portfolio. The, um, in, this, in the dye out that I did, I had to like smear the color so you can see the difference right. in the level because the dye load is so heavy in a three. Right. It's hard to tell the difference. And yeah. too, Dennis, I think a lot of people just, you know, think of clear, but there's many clears in one color portfolio. You know what I mean? So oh, there is. they need yes. to know what's, what's the difference between the ones they have in their portfolio. You know, you have a semi, you have the demi, and then you have more, um, you know, another clear that can lift and shift the hair color. So, I mean, how are you going to use it and when to use it? Well, you know, the genesis of that, goes all the way back to 1986. Okay, so when we created the first demi-permanent color in the industry, we put clear in the, in the group because we only had a small collection of tones. So by using clear, you could move them up and down. So after we did that, then marketing took over and they said, well, well, can they use clear alone? And we said, well, not really. It's designed to dilute the color. But they didn't believe that. And so they said, put clear on the hair and it'll give the hair shine. Well, clear can't give shine because in order to get shine, you need reflection. And in order to get reflection, it requires tone. <laughs> so if I put nothing on something, I'm going to see something. I'm not going to see the nothing that I put on it because it's going to totally disappear. But other manufacturers found that clear, they could add a clear skew into those lines and people could use them for shine. That basically what they all did. And, and if you think about it truly, it doesn't matter who makes the color. If it is a color that requires a developer, those dyes that are in the bottle or in the tube, however your color is manufactured, those dyes are alkaline. So if they're alkaline, they swell the hair. Mm -hmm. If they swell the hair, the cuticle's not compact. If the cuticle's not compact, <laughs> there's no light reflection, there is no shine. Ergo, it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> And so I mean, if anything, it might just swell cuticle layers and dull out the hair to the hair a little bit. Like, if you really mm -hmm. think about it, we're just swelling cuticle layers, and that's right. all we're doing because it's clear, well, right? And, and also possibly shift the base. Okay. Amen, oh, yeah, brother. That's yeah, true. absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So you have you're you're right, Yvette. You have clears that are in demi permanent brands, basically used as a shiner, some people understand how to use them as a dilution. 
you have some color companies now who put clear in their color, in their color families. <clears throat> and mm -hmm. if they did, I'm assuming the idea was to use it to dilute their colors. Years ago, we used to take and use high levels of color, higher levels of color in the most neutral shade possible, mix them with our deeper shades, and we used to say we're cleaning up the color because what happens if my color is more opaque or more muddy and I mix it with a lighter shade that has less pigment in it, it cleans it up. Because remember we said is that it's going to, that, that color is going to create more alkalinity. So you're not going to get as muddy of a color result. So many of those color companies started adding clear in so they could add it into their deeper shades to give them more reflection. But now you have also clear high lift tints. So a clear high lift tint is basically neutral oil bleach. That's what it is in a tube. So I wouldn't be mixing that with my darker levels of color mm -hmm. if you wanna keep them dark <laughs> because the high lift tint is going to degrade and break down most of the dye, the dye intermediate. It's gonna create more alkalinity. It's gonna cause a peroxide to create more uh, breaking down or fracturing of the dye intermediates and you're not gonna get full dye development. So you're right, there's different levels of clear. So identify which ones you want to use and use them accordingly. Um, I, to me, I'm a clear guy. I use clear a lot to adjust my colors because I understand the pigment saturation, pigment weight, mm -hmm. we call it. But when you understand that, it really does help you when you're trying to refine warmth. I know um, Erica and I have done a lot of work together and I know Erica does that a lot as well. She takes the darker shades and adds clear to them. And, um, you know, I, we find it very, very helpful. Absolutely. I do that too, Dennis, after I had uh, the first class that you did at the salon yeah. and learning about the pigment weight that, I mean, totally makes sense. And it works so much better, you know, just learning how to dilute it and how much, I mean, we'll do the formulas and then figure it out. And, you know, right. I mean, I think it works a whole lot better. I know yeah, I, I saw that Erica was doing something um, the other day on Facebook. She's uh, pretty amazing with all the visuals too. I love watching her stuff. Well, you know, it's, it's really rewarding for me to watch all the people who are developing this, the message, the very message we've been delivering in the visuals, you know, and it's like people are going, oh my God, this is great. Well, what you're seeing is a message we've been delivering for, for 30 years, but we finally have a group of, of salon professionals that are actually, their message is more visual than mine because sometimes I get going down a rabbit trail and sometimes I lose people because of the words I use. So they're more visual. They're actually verifying or validating everything that we teach. So we're very excited about that. So look guys, we probably need to answer some questions. We're running a little long here, aren't we? We are. Um, there isn't a lot of questions going on. I've been keeping an eye on it. Um, it's just a lot of highs and amens and say well, it good. Again, Dennis. So <laughs> Well, good. Well, um, my clock says we're setting at a 50 minute mark here. So we probably need to curtail this. Here's what I think we need to do. We probably need to do a part two of this. If you guys would like to see us do uh, another um, Rabbit Trails Live, please uh, drop us a note here on Facebook or send us a message. You can send it to info at gurunation.net and we'd be happy to, uh, to do that. Uh, it certainly has been fun having four people here mm -hmm. and uh, lots of content, lots of information. And uh, that's been great. Now, remember that you can reach Yvette. You can also follow her on Instagram. Yvette, what is your Instagram handle? Um, it's uh, Yvette, which is Y-V-E-T-T-E -E underscore Frontani, capital F-R-O. Look at me, capital. Okay, like I'm teaching class. F-R-O-N-T-A-N-Y. All right, great. And you can reach Erica on um, Instagram. Erica, what's your Instagram handle? It is also my name. It's Erica Blanced, E-R-I-K-A-B-L-A-N-S-E-T. -E Excellent. And Max, I know they can find you at Max M Hair on Instagram. You can find me at Real mm -hmm. Captain Color. 
We want to thank everyone who is watching a recording of this live stream on YouTube. Thank you for our YouTube followers. Our, our group has, has been growing. We are grateful for that. Um, we hope you find our information beneficial and we hope you, you find uh, the way we do the show, the style kind of relaxing and, you know, lots of fun, mm -hmm. things of that sort. So um, continue to follow us. You can subscribe on YouTube if you'd like to right down here below our video. Uh, you can also follow us on um, Facebook under Guru Nation. Uh, those of you here and Guru Hair Tribe, as you well know, this is a private group. Uh, it's a safe place where we feel that yeah, we have a lot of people on this that work for many different manufacturers mm -hmm. and give you great contributions to uh, some of the information uh, that we offer here on this private group. We're gonna be doing a lot more of uh, lives on this, on this forum itself and um, trying to get everybody involved and engaged. We also invite you to go to our website, www.gurunation.net and uh, check out our educational portfolio. We offer virtual classes. We give you webinars you can download and watch. And uh, God willing, and the COVID bacteria goes away, COVID virus, oh, yes. uh, we're hoping to start doing some live programs later this year, but it all depends upon uh, what's, what's going on and what's happening. But in any case, it has been fun, everybody. Thank you so much for being part of this today. And uh, I look forward to seeing all of you either together on this with me or you come back and visit Max and I on a single basis. Doesn't matter. We love having you here. We love the contributions that you that you that you offer. And oh, oh, OK, there is our ride. So those of us in the woods, we got to go catch That's the <laughs> chopper. And so until we see you again, everyone, I want to thank you, Yvette. Thank you, Erica. Thank you. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank, thank you, Max, you. my friend. Thanks, From my heart to yours, I am Captain Color. I am out. Take care. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye, <laughs> everybody. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.